Greetings Pilgrims and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage and today I wanted to share with you some progress I've been making on my Art Station Ancient Civilizations Environment Challenge. So here we have uh, the scene as you've seen it before and I know it looks like I haven't done much but I actually have. I've been doing a lot of unwrapping and not many of the pieces are imported quite yet because I'm working on unwrapping and then setting the scene up, doing some lighting tests. As you can see there's lots of different lights all around. All the lighting here is very, very temporary. I've been working it out. And then I said, okay, my next big challenge is that this whole room, this whole environment, is supposed to be a built by ancient peoples, and then some race has augmented it with all of these uh, mechanical things here and all this high sci-fi type stuff. And then our group of explorers here uh, shows up and they're, you know, they're looking around like, what is this, you know? So. Um, this is the, the, the challenge and this is the environment that I'm trying to build. So what I wanted to do was make sure that I had all of my stone figured out. And the first order of business, of course, uh, looking at the environment and how curved the environment is, I knew that I needed to have curved stones. So I spent some time to figure out how to generate some curved floor stones here and this will work out as well for uh, the ceiling, for this little pit that we've got here, this actually goes down and comes back up and we've got all kinds of things going on, uh, but lots of curves everywhere. So what I wanted to share with you today is how I went about generating uh, this pattern here. And I did some experiments and it's very difficult to take just a normal brick wall pattern with your, uh, your horizontal and your vertical grout lines. And there is a node inside of Southern Designer, as you've seen, I did another video on this, uh, the Cartesian to polar and you would think you could just you know put it into a circle and there you go you've got curved bricks however the nature of that node it tends to take a central line and sort of stretch everything around in a circle so what you get is you get the uh, vertical I mean sorry, sorry the horizontal grout lines quite well but the vertical grout lines end up being more of a like a wedge type shape and that doesn't really work out too well. So we needed to sort of generate it ourselves. And I wanted to have a lot of control over how wide the bricks are. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted to make sure the bricks were large and got smaller, which that kind of happened by accident, as you'll see, but a happy accident for me. And I wanted to have control over, you know, where the lines ended up and put some randomness to it and all that sort of thing. And I knew that I had an existing material here that I had followed from another tutorial on how to create um, the bricks. As you can see here, we got some really nice cracks in the bricks and some good edge damaging and all that sort of thing. So I already had like a brick material ready to go, but what I needed was a very good uh, mask, if you will, for the curved nature of the bricks. So that's what we're gonna be covering today. So let me open up Substance Designer here and you can see what we got going on. And uh, that's a very strange preview, but we will preview this instead. There we go. So this is really what we're focused on creating today. So what we have here is our curved bricks. And as you can see, the, the pattern and, uh, of the graph ended up being quite beautiful uh, just in itself. And up here, all of this is just to generate those final brick details to get all this uh, edge damaging and all the cracks. This is the tutorial part. And I'm not going to be covering that because it's not my, my work. I, I don't want to take credit for that. So that I use that and it does end up looking really nice. But the curved nature and all this patterning is what I did today. So I wanted to share with that with you. So starting at the beginning, what we're basically doing is creating a series of rings to start with. So as you can see here, I have a shape node of a circle. And then this is a transform where I made that circle slightly smaller. And then by subtracting the two, and I use the smaller shape as the foreground and the larger shape as the background, it cuts out from the middle and we end up with a ring. Pretty simple so far. Now the trick is, this next transform is actually the smaller shape, but just slightly smaller than its current state here. Because then when I take that and say smaller shape again by this same ratio and subtract, I get another ring. However, if you put two rings together using exactly the previous shape, you're gonna end up with one butting up exactly against the other. 
And while in some situations that might be desirable, that's not desirable for creating uh, ringed bricks like this because we need to have this space here, this grout line for our horizontal lines. So as you can see here, if I look at them blended together, there is a little bit of a gap and that's gonna be our grout line in between the bricks. So that's what this middle section here is for saying, let me take that previous shape and reduce it by just a little bit. And I mean just a little bit. For this scale, this reduction I think is 99.75%. So it's a very small reduction, but that generates our little grout line here. And then it's continue to do the same thing 11 more times. <laughs> so in order to make that part easier, what I did here was I used a uh, sort of a programmatic approach. Uh, in programming, we would create something called a macro or a function. So where it takes generic inputs and does some sort of process repeatedly. And you can just call it anytime you need to do it. Technically, if you go to your computer and pull up the, the calculator, the calculator is just a series of uh, functions. So what I did here was I figured out the math and then I made a copy and duplicated these over here and left them by, by themselves. And you can see this is, this is even set up to subtract already and these are the correct uh, percentages. You can see that line move there. If I look at the two of them, you can see the line move, see? So they're already set up to the correct percentages and then all I did was say, for each of these, find your previous smallest. So this guy, this guy said this would be the previous smallest here. So that's going to become these three here. And you can see these three correlate to these three here. So I would just say, okay, create one in the chain, then copy paste this over and connect it all up. And each time you can see what we're getting here is this ring and then a smaller ring and a smaller ring until we work our way down all the way over to this. So this is all of the rings. As you can see here, all of the rings without any of the other lines yet. We're going to get to that. But then I needed to make sure I used this kind of a setup. Uh, this piece of geometry that I used is actually this shape, but then I wanted to make sure that I unwrapped it to a zero to one UV space such as this. So I wanted to transform this down and it's just a simple uh, doubling up the size and then moving it to negative 0.25 for both the X and the Y to move the center down to here. And now we have our rings, okay. So we got the rings down, and that's great, but now what we need are all of these, uh, the vertical grout lines. So the vertical grout lines are accomplished by doing the following. So we have a shape node again, this time set to a square, and I'm going to move this size down all the way down to 0.01. Now this is the value you want to mess with to increase the size of your horizontal grout lines here. So if you wanted them to be, I'm sorry, vertical grout lines, if you wanted those to be larger, you had to make this number larger. Or you could make it smaller still if you wanted them to be even smaller. I think that for my particular setup here, 0.01 is perfect. So then we're going to throw those into a splatter circular. And you can see here, I'll show you the settings here. Uh, radius of 0.3. My scale is up to 0.55. That's to get the line to go roughly from the center all the way to the end. Then I have uh, rotation 0.25 and center orientation true. And that allows the lines to sort of start in the middle and work their way outward in this, you know, this uh, splatter uh, working outward from the center. And then we have the random mask to remove some of them. Okay. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set up multiple so these are 11 copies and each time I've just changed all of these I've changed the uh, up here I changed the random seed I changed the random mask and then you can change the scale if you need to so this is where you get your variety is doing all of these here and it's just the same thing copied move down you can see they even all feed from this line and then changing these patterns so you can see here let's look at a couple patterns there's an interesting one there's one like that, and we're not going to combine these individually. Each of these drives the subtraction of our individual rings. So for example, our first ring here, this guy is a transform to do this same effect to our original ring. There he is, okay, so he gets transformed. Then I'm going to copy and paste the transform because I need the exact same transform 
and I'm going to feed it into the first of the splatter circular. So this is only two lines at the moment. Then by blending the two together and doing a subtract, you can see here I cut through that ring and generate my, my bricks here. So this outer ring here has very wide bricks. So I might want to make smaller bricks there, I probably will. Uh, you know, add a couple more iterations here. And then I just throw this into a blend with the previous one. And there we go, we start to work our way down. And this is, this is all the magic. It's just lots of organization. And there we go, once you get through all of them, now you can look at here and say, I don't like how these line up. You could mess with that with a rotation as well before you put it into this um, transform to make just the quarter panel here. I'm doing a quarter panel because I have four sections there and I have a center seam element which is going to cover the seams, cover the gaps. So what I'm doing is taking each of these, going through and randomizing the seed values and then once I'm happy with it, I'll export all these textures, apply them to the one material, come back and mess with the seed values again, export again, and I get a different section of bricks for each quadrant pretty simply. It's, it's quite easy to generate a whole new set of bricks uh, quickly. Then, uh, once I've got everything combined, all the way down here, what I want to do is take a look in here closely. So, I'm going to be feeding this into my brick tutorial section up here. And this section is what does, you can see some of it here, this is what does a lot of the, uh, the chipping and the cracks and the weathering and all that sort of thing, okay? Uh, so the real magic is happening up here and down here is just setting up for success. You know, a good solid foundation gives you great results. So down here, what I've got is a levels that I apply, and you see the difference. I want you to really see the difference here. So if you look here, you can see how this looks a little, a little gray, and this is like solid harsh black and white. So then if I put in the levels here, you can see, okay, that's a lot more black. So what I've done is put a levels on here and made some adjustments, because the idea is to make sure that there's enough space here for this grout have some breathing room for all these nice effects to take place because if you have that gray it might not pick up correctly or you're just going to have too much uh, too much wishy-washy area in here you know too much give when I really want some nice harsh cutouts because then I'm going to go up on the top there and start to chip away at things and I need to have that solid foundation and I mean if you wanted to have it more gray if you wanted the bricks to be more like they're sitting in like a muddy type nature where they might they might droop down a bit over time. You could keep that, but for me, I want to have a nice, harsh cutout, nice, clean cut look to it. And as you can see here, um, it turned out really nice. And now uh, all I have to do is take all of my bricks here and mess with the settings. And I'm actually working on a way to take all of this and put it into a, um, a single node with some with some markers on it that I could say hey, let me hit a, a master seed value and let me go and randomize some of the sub-seeds, if you will, and then maybe even feed it a shape at the beginning and say, here's where and how large I want my initial ring to be, and maybe then a value you can slide to say how many inner rings I want, and it would do all of this nature for you. Probably set it up to do a maximum of 10 or so at first, and then just have a series of the uh, switch statements so if the value is greater than 2, then switch on to 3. If the value is greater than 3, switch on to 4. And if we just daisy chain them like we have here, which ends up with a really nice looking result here, very clean graph. I've seen a lot of pictures online of uh, when people do IT stuff and they put wiring into the cabinet like this and just make it real nice and organized. I, I like it. I think it's easy to read. But then with those switch statements, we can just daisy chain into the next one and have as many as we like. So I'm working on a way to do that. If I come up with that, I'll definitely let you know. But for today, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of progress on my project here. And uh, I made a lot of progress with unwrapping and getting everything functionally working. The whole room actually moves and all the gears really work. So it's gonna be really fantastic. But this was a big hurdle that I needed to jump. So I wanted to make sure that if I, when I was successful, I wanted to make sure that I shared it with you and showed you kind of my thought process behind this. And as always, you know, I'm learning as I do this and this is just my journey shared with you. So I'm sure this is not the best way to do this. So if you have a better method, let me know. If you come up with something similar, let's take a look, let's share it with everybody so we can all learn and grow because that's really what I'm all about. So this is looking good for now. I'm gonna get back to working on the rest of it 
And as always, guys, I hope that you have enjoyed very much. And as always, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.